Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. If you're one of our regular subscribers, you might have noticed that despite the similarities in appearance, I'm not Professor John R., who normally does the videos. I know a lot of people say we look a lot alike, but if you were standing here, you'd immediately notice the difference. I'm a lot taller, and it's a dead giveaway. I'm Don, and today I'm going to show you how to make this. Now, you're probably looking at this and saying, well, that doesn't look like a piece of jewelry. That looks like a piece of trash that you should throw away. And you're probably right. Uh, not that I should throw it away, but that it looks like trash. But you'll be amazed at what this trash can do. When it comes to photographing jewelry, this will become your lifesaver. Because photographing jewelry in today's world is so much more important than it was back in the early days when we still ate dinosaur meat. Now, when you go out to sell your jewelry, you're really not going out. You're really selling it through pictures. And so having the best pictures is really more important than it ever was because that's the way you're going to sell your jewelry. That's the way you're going to make money. Flat pieces of jewelry like the ones I'm showing here, these are very tough to, pho to photograph because they're flat and they reflect everything. They reflect hot spots of light. They reflect things around the room. Very hard to photograph. And using this, it makes it really, really easy. A piece of jewelry like this one here, that's all organic, uh, this is really a pretty easy piece of jewelry to photograph. But I'm going to show you some of the tricks to making this piece look better too. And these pieces of jewelry are translucent. When you have translucent jewelry, underlighting it as well as overlighting it is really important because it just brings out the piece and makes it glow. So I'm first going to show you how we actually make this. Afterwards, I'm going to show you some of the tricks of how to photograph your pieces to really make them look great. You should watch the entire video because you'll be surprised. Some of the things I'm going to show you when you first look at this, you say, well, that just looks obvious. But when I show you some of the other things that we've learned over the years, some of the tips of how to use this, you're going to find that it's going to save you a lot of time and give you some really great photographs. Let me clear the table, and then I'm going to show you how to make this. Okay, I've got everything set up to make this very, very simple project. First, I've got a one-gallon translucent bottle. We used to fur windshield wiper fluid once upon a time. I also have a bleach bottle. It was used for bleach. And I'm also going to use foam plates. The fact that I'm using these two bottles doesn't mean you can't use other types of bottles. You could use a, a bottle like this, which had been used for protein powder, or we even found a trash can that was a great shape, a great color, and a great size. But today I'm going to show you how to make the project with these. Now, this bottle contained windshield wiper fluid. So this was really easy to dispose of the fluid. All I had to do was put it in my car. This one, on the other hand, is bleach. And you want to be very careful with how you get rid of bleach. You want to get rid of it safely. And when I say safely, I don't mean feeding it to the neighbor's dog that barks too much. I mean like maybe washing every piece of white clothing you've ever owned as many times as it takes until you have an empty bleach bottle. Once the bottle is empty, then what you want to do is you want to rinse it out with hot water. You'll be amazed at how fast the bleach smell will go away. Let it dry, and then you're ready to go. You're going to want to cut off this label. Now this label, the ones that I bought, happen to be great because they have labels that aren't glued on. They're just stuck on with, or they're just plastic that was shrink wrapped on. So you'll just cut the label right off. And the whole thing just comes right off like that. Now, what I found is if you try to use your utility knife to cut along this line, it's going to be very difficult to get a straight line. It's better to cut way up above the line, cut this entire piece off, and then take some little scissors like these and cut back down to the line and then cut all the way around until your sides meet and you take off the little piece that's left. 
Otherwise, you're going to find that you're not going to get a very straight line. When you're done cutting it, you're going to end up with a nicely cut bottom of a bleach bottle. Now, the last thing that you need to cut on the bleach bottle is going to be a little hole in the top. Now, the most logical place most people would want to cut the holes right in the middle, but that is a terrible place to cut the hole. Because if you cut the hole right in the middle and you put a reflective piece of jewelry underneath, that hole is reflected in the image, and all of a sudden you'll have a little UFO, a little unidentified floating object going on to your jewelry piece. And people won't like that, and your picture won't come out very good. On the translucent bottle, because you're going to use this bottle at the bottom, you're going to cut it the same way on the top, but on the bottom, you're going to want to cut out a large hole. The reason you're going to cut out a large hole on the bottom is because you may want to put some kind of a small lighting source underneath this sometimes. This one doesn't have to be perfect. It's never going to show. It doesn't make any difference. I'm going to put this piece together, and now we'll be ready to take some pictures. The one thing I haven't discussed is what we're going to use to actually take the pictures with. A Fuji, an Nikon, no, nothing like that. We're going to use a cell phone. Cell phones today are amazing. They have more megapixels than most cameras, and they've got features built in that allow you to do some of the editing, cropping, uh, color adjustment, so they are great. They also have the advantage that you can send out pictures through social media directly from your cell phone. Now, you might have noticed that I'm using white plates. Well, part of the reason is white plates are just a lot easier to find. Also, white happens to be the color of this year for the backgrounds for jewelry. Colors change, but white now is very, very popular because as far as video editing software, having a white background gives you a lot more flexibility. So, white is a great color. However, you're not limited to white. You can use any color background that you want. One of the things you do want to kind of check after you've made your project is you want to kind of look in here, make sure there aren't any lumps or weird spots on the plastic that would cast uneven shadows. If there are, then you might have to go back and get another bottle of bleach. Lighting. The very best lighting that we found is actually the free lighting go outside. When we went outside and photographed this in what's called bright indirect shade, we got better results than any of the lighting we set up. Now, bright indirect shade means that you have to go outside and you have to find a spot where you're not covered, where you can look up and see blue sky, but where you're actually in the shade. So the sun's at an angle, you're in the shade over here. And then you want to kind of set your piece kind of close to where the shadow is so that you, it's not in the sunlight, it's in the shade, but it's kind of close to the bright spot. If you really need to use artificial lighting, well, there's a lot of different sources. Now, probably if the sources we tried, the best source is actually going to be the new LED lights with the daylight color. I would use three of these around this piece, but today for demonstration purposes, I happen to have these little lights, these little mini lights. They're LED lights. They're kind of, they kind of cast a bit of a blue light, but for this demonstration, they're going to work just fine. And they're light, they're easy. I was able to move them over here really fast. One of the things you need to do is experiment. Try different lighting sources. Try different ways of doing things. Every jewelry piece is different. They're all going to photograph differently under different circumstances. Today, I'm going to give you a basic path. The first things I'm going to talk about are these. The, these pieces are translucent pieces. And because they're translucent, they're going to look a lot better if they have a little bit of underlighting so that it comes through and shows you the, the material as a translucent piece. So, the first thing we'll do is I will put this onto our bottom stand and because it's translucent we're going to want to have some underlighting on it so I put this underlight over here now I want these kind of at the bottom because when I shoot through here I want to shoot through here at this angle and be able to get these pieces now again because they're translucent 
I actually wouldn't mind having even a little bit more underlighting. So I'm going to add a little teeny bit more both on the underside and it's going to reflect up on the top. I'll put my piece up and you'll notice that I'm putting the hole on the opposite side. And now we'll bring the camera into place and there those pieces are and they look great. You can see them, they actually almost look like they're glowing in there. You should probably take a bunch of pictures because sometimes the focus doesn't hit quite right the first time. So, those pieces are done. Now let's go to this piece. This piece also benefits a little bit from underlighting. However, this piece is different because it's an organic piece. It doesn't have flat surfaces that are really reflecting lights and hot spots. You want the reflection on this piece. You'll want to see how bright it is. So keeping this piece and keeping these lights a little bit above it without putting the upper dome, but by utilizing the underlighting, you get rid of some of those shadows. So with this piece, we're just going to take pictures of it like this. And our last piece these two pieces, these are the tricky ones. These need everything. These need any bit of help they can get because you can see they are bright. Any, they reflect any surface. They reflect the lighting up above, lines, whatever else. But in this case, we don't need underlighting because if we put underlighting under these pieces, they're going to make them, they're going to put them in silhouette. So we don't want any underlighting under there. We actually don't want a lot of overlighting on them because we'll start getting a reflection. However, what we do want is we want this upper dome to kind of glow so that it will light the piece from up above and it's going to look great. You'll see. This is really a great and inexpensive way of photographing some of that difficult to photograph shiny jewelry. Does it work perfectly for every piece? No, you have to experiment a little bit. Some of the organic pieces need a sharper, brighter light. One last tip. When you use a cell phone, the cell phone makes automatic adjustments to brightness and contrast. And so it's not cheating for you to go back in after you've taken the pictures and just kick up the brightness and contrast a little bit. You'll get a much sharper, brighter, more beautiful picture. I hope you have fun making this thing that kind of looks like a prototype for a spaceship. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Also check out our webpage at www.onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching.